And right now, you know, I'm posted up. Got the Airbnb for a month just to uh, start working on Collection 2. I was in New York and I just didn't want to do nothing, so I came down here to get it for a month just to start working or whatever. I've been inside every day. Uh, I ride limes. It's the only thing that makes me happy, riding the scooters. Oh, $20 ride. $8 ride. $7, $11, $13. i have been to Costco once and I spent $400 on food and I haven't made anything yet. been here sewing away. Everyone else quit. He's the last one remaining. So we've just been buying shit from the thrift store and shit, cutting it up and uh, sewing it. Got a dollar in there. Just like everyone wants to make the sickest jeans in the world, so I figured I'd do it real quick. Uh, so I made like these t-shirt puffer jackets and uh, I made home one, sent him one, reached out to him. He really liked it. He asked me to pull up to New York, and I was like, sick, I'll be there until like tomorrow. I got a flight that day. I worked with him for a while, then went back home. I was home for like three days. He was like, trying to fly to LA. I was like, yeah, let's get it. Uh, we've just been cutting up a bunch of clothes and then just sewing them together, panel by panel. So each pair of jeans is gonna take like eight hours to make or something like that. Or a lot of one bathroom break every three days. <laughs> and, uh, I sleep every other day. Food situation, uh, there's not much of it. But when there is food, it's uh, mostly coffee. A lot of fallen soldiers, but uh, it's okay. We pay our respects and we just gotta keep moving on. Everyone wants to do this DIY shit, but no one wants to put the time into it it actually takes to make it look crazy. And no one's like stupid enough to make it look this crazy, so. I'm from Kentucky in the middle of nowhere. And I remember just being such a big fan of Austin's. Me making, helping sew the clothes for all the kids that are out there in the middle of America, middle of nowhere, other countries that haven't had a chance to buy the ass pizza stuff yet, those are the kids that I'm making this shit for. I wish you guys recorded when there was like, I had 10 kids here just all cutting up the shit. And it was like so quiet and everyone was just cutting up clothes. Like, it was the most confusing thing. If someone were to see it, they'd be like, what the fuck? The last time I talked to you guys, probably like two weeks after that, I started living in uh, this kid I met, Sean's garage. And I lived there for like four months in his garage because he would help me sew stuff and shit and screen print, whatever. Was, I was just like, fuck it. Like, I just have to start making shit. Like, I had so many ideas and shit. He helped me make a lot of that stuff I wanted to make like come true. First, I just started selling it to the kids in his like neighborhood in the IE. Like I would just have kids meet us at Little Caesars and I'd sell them the clothes. The money I got, I put it back in and then I was like, oh, we're gonna like stock up and then we're gonna go on, on tour, like drive it and kids will meet us at the Walmart parking lot. Joe. 
60 hours just to get here today. I don't think we're gonna pay this for. Yeah. But it's okay, you know, because look at these kids. Look how happy they are, you know what I'm saying? Look at he's taking pictures with the film camera. Wow. He's gonna expose it. We were just in the fucking, a tight car filled with fucking clothes and it was super uncomfortable. It was nice. I definitely want to go on tour again soon. But um, when I was in the garage, like, everyone thought I was retarded. They didn't know what I was doing. And I also didn't know what I was doing, but uh, like I did at the same time, because I knew the path was right. This shall be documented. I want people to know that this is my land. This is my kingdom. And we will ride into town on a horse and carriage, greeting the locals, giving them our gifts. On Christmas, I told kids to meet at Supreme because I'm going to give away a bunch of shirts because I woke up on Christmas and I had nothing to do. Everyone lined up at the Supreme store. It was nighttime and it was cold as fuck. So all the kids came and I didn't have enough shirts for them. And I said, you know, I got to give them something to remember. Everybody's going to get married. Don't worry, y'all. Once I ran out of shirts, I told the kid at the front of the line to follow me when I start walking and to pass it down. I start walking and then uh, all the kids are just following me. And then I, I sprint away. And then all the kids are sprinting down the street. And then the police come and grab me and shit, but then I act like uh, I'm just trying to go home and shit. I don't grab him though, he's celebrity. Chill. It was fun. <laughs> you know, I, I want to do more shit like that, you know, with the people and shit. You just keep building up, you know? Because we had, like, zero dollars. Like, I started really working in July. At the end of the year, I bought a house. And I'm proud of myself. I haven't been buying any stupid shit, really, so. My biggest problem in life is just finding a place to work. So, with all the money I made on tour and shit and the pop-ups, I just bought a house in Pennsylvania, literally in the middle of nowhere. Like the only thing that's close to it is like a bunch of Amish people and shit. And it's like a big ass house. So I'm so excited. Once I'm in there, it's just only work this whole year. It's sick. Whoever really wants to help make the clothes could be there. So it's only productiveness. That's it. I'm going to get embroidery machines and like have a bunch of sewers and shit. It's going to be good. It takes like a month to get ready or whatever. And uh, I'm just waiting. People, especially people in like a uh, position or whatever, they just feel like they have to keep an image and shit. And sometimes you just gotta start over and start from scratch like in the garage where you just have to put all your resources together. Without money and stuff, like you have to come up with ideas. I would give the clothes away for free, but uh, like I need to survive and shit. It's the only shit that keeps me going. It's just making the product, you know? Without this, my life would have no meaning. <laughs> so this is the only thing that, uh, makes me live, seriously. Like the 2019 shit's gonna be way better than 2018 shit. I'm honestly surprised people like the 2018 shit so much. 2018 shit was still the greatest in the world, but this is even a hundred times better. So. These clothes are just real, you know? They've been through experiences, crazy like we got all these old ass clothes from the thrift store and shit and this is probably like some like little girl sweater and now it's gonna be in this person's jeans there's just so many different people that wore these clothes and shit and it's just still traveling the world and shit someone's gonna buy them and like die someone's gonna buy them and go somewhere far someone's gonna like uh, <laughs> lose them sure. It's just, it's just cool. I like just to see the shit travel. The whole year, it's just gonna be a bunch of different pop-ups. 
and then like each pop up will have different shit. So collection one was only five different pieces, but there's like hundreds of the pieces, but there's only five different designs. This shit, there's gonna be like over a hundred in collection two. So big uh, step up. It's the greatest shit. I've been into every subculture you can imagine, but other than like this occasional moment, it's always been trash to really find someone who makes clothes who's really salt of the earth. Doesn't matter where he's come from, where he, what he looks like, it's the inside. Everyone has twisted perception. If you can't see Ars Pizza as the greatest to ever fucking do it, you're literally insane. I literally, within them, see Mark Jacobs, Tarantino, Brando, um, Orson Welles. I could break down every statement I'm making and go down these worms of intellect that would satisfy all your intellectual desire. At the end of the day, you just have to fucking look. Cut the drugs, cut the, the bullying, and escape through healthiness. You don't need to go out like Steve Stevenson. Your last words don't need to be, where's my chicken McNuggets? You don't need to say that just because your friends goaded you into killing an old weak man because you were desperate for attention. You don't need to be killing people for clout. Worst comes to worst, flap a lot, lock yourself away, play shedlers of Fortnite. You don't have to be mad at the world. You don't need to take your anger out on everyone. Look at this man. Do you know how much nonsense he has to put up with like that goes around him? I've never seen him get heated. Yeah, so everyone sees the clothes and thinks it's so like negative and shit with like the nothing matters and fuck life. Because people are so like nervous or, and like self-conscious or whatever to do some shit. Like they come up with a thousand reasons to not do some shit or they're just stuck in their feelings or whatever. I was the same way for so many years and then I want to make the shit exactly how I wanted it. I was going to wait until like I could do it perfectly. But that day never really comes because like you can never get shit exactly how you want it. So I just had to start telling myself like nothing matters. Just go and do this shit, you know? Like just go do it because it doesn't fucking matter. Like that. It's just a confidence booster. You just gotta remind yourself that nothing really matters and to stay focused on the main overall shit, you know? Like the world is just a terrible place. You just gotta do what you want, you know? <laughs> fuck life, that's it. Fuck life really means fuck life. <laughs> we thank God for another beautiful day on this earth. We thank God for our health and our wealth. And we thank God for another daily meal. Amen. 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 It's mad good. Coconut man. Coconut man. Coconut man. Coconut man. Coconut. I am the coconut man. Yeah. I am the coconut man. I have a coconut and I have a plan. I am the coconut man. I have a coconut and I have a plan and I have two hands and in both hands in in both hands I have two coconuts in my hands I am the coconut man and the coconut man I wear a coconut colored shirt on the coconut man I have a coconut and I have a plan Crack the coconut make the plan Pour the coconut juice in a can Make the coconut cola man I am the coconut man Pour the coconut juice in my hands And I rub it on my leg Then I rub it on my other hand I am the coconut man Crack me open the only meat that you'll find Is some coconut in my hand I am the coconut man If you crack me open You will find some coconut juice in my blood Cause I am the coconut man I have coconut hands I have coconut hair I have coconut bears I have coconut snares Snare drums made of coconuts I am drinking on coconuts And I am going nuts I'm going up Going crazy smoking dust I am the coconut man I have coconut hands I have coconut hair I have coconut bears I have coconut snares I am the coconut man I am the coconut man I have a coconut hand, I have a coconut shoe, what the hell are you? You're not a coconut man, you're just a funny with no hands, you're just a funny with no shoes.
This is the raw shit that I have to build up from, you know? Like, I want it to be handmade and just like, like real shit. Cause I know later on, like, it's gonna get bigger and shit. So it's not gonna be that personal, but there will always be aspects of shit. It makes me, like, sleep better at night knowing that, like, my shit's out there that I touched and shit, and it's just like all around the world. So literally, that's what I think about to fall asleep, is knowing that my shit's out there. Like, it's therapeutic, you know? It all comes from, like, graffiti, cause you can't really explain why people do graffiti. They're risking their life. They're doing it anonymously like, for no reason. You can't explain it. It's all about just getting up, right? And that's why they do it. And they say like graffiti is like therapy and shit. And I, like, I think the same way with my clothes because uh, when I see someone wearing it and stuff shit, that's me getting up, you know? I could do this shit corny, like sell out, be, like do all this stupid shit. I like to build it strongly, you know, like the path strongly. So, so these are the shoes that are gonna break the world once they drop, 7.30 uh, up tempos. Shout out to Osh for making the 3D model. This this isn't the only shoe that's dropping this year too. On 73019 is the only day I'm dropping shit online. The only day you could get shit online. This year I just have planned like seven or eight major pop-ups like all over the world. And each pop-up will have different shit. Like I'll probably have like six pieces from collection two. And then after that, the next pop-up will have like 15. And then the next one will have like, you know, whatever. Cause collection two is gonna last all year. So collection one, I wanna be like the staple collection so people could look back on it and it's just like kind of basic shit you know but this shit is more free now so i could just make different crazier shit so this whole year i'm just dedicating to working by the end of this year shit will be a lot different i want to get out of la too <laughs> also in the last interview i feel like a lot of kids they got the message wrong about the not thinking shit the only reason I say not to think is because um, cause like I'm at a point where I know a lot of shit and I know what I want and I know thinking gets me sad as fuck so like I literally know what I have to do so I have to just turn my mind off and do it you know but I'm not saying to turn your mind off if you don't know anything okay I mean you'll probably still be happy but like you gotta you gotta stay productive you can't be a retard or stupid sorry sorry for using bad terms